Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 14th of December. Anti-China protests erupt across India over Tawang border clash. China shocked that Kabul hotel attack that injured its five citizens. And Indian Navy chief meets top military leadership in Sri Lanka to boost ties. And now for all the details. Indian groups took to the streets on Wednesday to condemn China after the Indian Army and Chinese troops were involved in a border face-off that led to injuries on both sides on December 9. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said the transgression was aimed at changing the status quo. The scuffle was first between the two countries since deadly clashes in 2020. Protests have erupted across India against China after the recent clash of the Indian Army and the Chinese People's Liberation Army near the line of actual control in Tawang in India's Arunachal Pradesh state, which India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has said was aimed at changing the status quo. Protesters in northern Jammu city chanted slogans on Wednesday against Chinese President Xi Jinping and demanded boycott of Chinese products and strict action against the transgression during which both sides suffered injuries, but no fatalities. Underlining that a ban cannot be imposed overnight, a traders' body in capital New Delhi asked for a systematic closure on import from Beijing, adding that government should encourage products which are indigenously manufactured. The traders said if trade with China increases, the money inflow in Beijing will be used against India. Our कि भाई आप एकदम से चीन के साथ खरीदना बंद नहीं कर सकते लेकिन जो आइटम्स हैं प्लास्टिक है फर्नीचर है खिलौने हैं जो भारत देश में पहले से ही बनते हैं आप उनका आयात बंद कीजिए फिर धीरे-धीरे फेज बाय एक दीर्घकालिक योजना बना के चीन के सामान का बहिष्कार करना पड़ेगा और एक कंट्री ऑफ ओरिजिन का लेबल भी ई कॉमर्स प्रोडक्ट पे होना चाहिए जिससे जो आदमी सामान खरीद रहा है उसको पता चल सके कि वो किस देश में बना है मीनवाइल पेंटागन रिएक्टिंग टू द क्लैश सेड the U.S. continues to closely monitor the developments along the India-China border. Pentagon spokesperson Brigadier Pat Ryder added that U.S. will continue to remain steadfast in their commitment to ensure the security of their partners. The United Nations has also called for de-escalation of tension between India and China. The recent clash near Tawang is the first after the two Asian giants engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat in 2020 in Galwan Valley of India's Union Territory of Ladakh. The 2020 incident has kept the bilateral relations between Beijing and New Delhi uneasy. Pakistan's former and ruling finance ministers have expressed split views over default risk the country faces amid the ongoing economic crisis. The financial wizards have, however, emphasized the need for external funding to shore up reserves, while the South Asian nation has so far failed to persuade the IMF to resume a bailout program. Pakistan's former and ruling finance ministers Mifta Ismail and Ishaq Dar have not been able to agree on whether the national economy is still in the red or out of danger. During interviews with the local media channels on Tuesday, Dar's predecessor Mifta Ismail insisted that the default risk would not subside unless IMF, the International Monetary Fund, came to the table. Dar, on the other hand, argued that the country's performance criteria was up to the mark but Pakistan had eroded its credibility before the IMF due to the actions of the previous government and the fund was asking for further information rather than just current quarter. During an event in Islamabad on Wednesday, he emphasized that the foreign lenders must realize that Pakistan is facing a forex currency crunch. Federal have to understand this is neither Bank of England or Federal Reserve that we can afford that if it goes outside the band or below the band and they intervene and spend whatever they spend or buy whatever they buy, we have constraint of forex reserves. An IMF review for the release of its next tranche of funding has been pending since September, leaving Pakistan in dire need of external financing. Pakistan has failed to persuade the IMF to review the surcharges it collects from them on loans that are not repaid quickly. Pakistan's finance ministry last week said the government had put in place austerity measures 
aimed at eliminating non-essential expenditure and had been focusing on energy conservation to reduce its import bill. Moving on, women health workers in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently held a protest against the arbitrary decision of the authorities to terminate the services of 300 health workers in maternal and child health department. The protesting workers allege that they have also not received their salaries for the past six months, adding that the issue will not only affect 300 employees but their families too. Women health workers of maternal and child health MNCH department in Pakistan administered Kashmir took to the streets over the decision of authorities to terminate around 300 of them. Protesting in front of the MNCH office in the region, the terminated workers alleged their salaries of past six months have also been withheld. They complained the authorities made an arbitrary decision overnight after the elections were wrapped up in Muzaffarabad and warned of further protests until the rollback of the decision and immediate release of their dues. रात को इन्होंने नोटिफिकेशन जारी कर दिया कि इनको फारक कर दें। ये इन कई भूल हैं। ये समझते हैं कि हमने इनको फारक किया और ये चले जाएंगे। ये 400 या 300 मलाजमीन का मसला नहीं है, 300 खंडानों का मसला है। छः-छः किलोमीटर दूर चल के हम जाते हैं, डिलीवरीज करवाते हैं, मरीजों को घरों में जा के चेक करते हैं, तो उसके बाद आज छः माह के बाद हमें सैलरी भी नहीं मिली, और हमें आज का कहा जा कल हमें नोटिफिकेशन जा रही हुआ कि आप लोग कंटिजेंट जॉब भी हैं, वो फारेक हैं और आप अपने-अपने घरों को People in Pakistan administered Kashmir have long accused they are subjected to discrimination by Pakistan government, which administers the region. The residents of the illegally occupied region say, even after 75 years, they are denied basic fundamental rights by Islamabad and there is no authority that can address their concerns. China has expressed shock over the attack on a hotel in Afghanistan's capital Kabul this week that wounded five of its nationals and has raised strong opposition against any form of terrorism. China has asked the Afghan authorities to make all-out efforts for safety of Chinese nationals and punish the perpetrators. China on Tuesday expressed shock at the gun and bomb attack at a hotel in Kabul, in which five of its citizens were badly wounded and once again asked its nationals to leave Afghanistan. The attack claimed by the Islamic State militant group in Kabul ended with the killing of three gunmen, the Taliban said on Tuesday. China's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin, while calling for an investigation into the incident, said the nature of this terrorist attack was abominable. Wang added that China demands the Afghan side spare no effort in severely punishing the attackers and earnestly strengthen the protection of Chinese citizens and organizations in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres also strongly condemned the Kabul hotel attack and reiterated that the attacks against civilians and civilian objects are strictly prohibited under international humanitarian law. The Taliban-run administration has struggled to stabilize the security situation even after the departure of US-led foreign forces last year and the two decades of war in Afghanistan. Islamic State radicals have launched multiple attacks in Kabul, including on the Russian and Pakistan embassies in recent months. In news from Nepal, lawyers' bodies in Nepal have condemned the government's move to bring an ordinance aimed to withdraw criminal cases against people involved in political agitations. This comes as the ruling coalition is trying to win the support of other political parties to secure a halfway majority in the parliament. The Nepal Bar Association and the Supreme Court Bar Association have both condemned the government's move to bring an ordinance proposing to amend the Criminal Procedure Code to withdraw cases filed against people involved in political agitations who have entered into agreements to renounce violent methods. The ordinance by the Cabinet has been sent to President Vidya Devi Bhandari for approval. Reports suggest the legislation aims to pave the way for the release of Resham Chaudhary 
who is an advisor to the Nagrik Unmukti Party and is serving a life sentence for allegedly masterminding the 2015 Tikapur massacre. This comes as the ruling coalition is trying to win the support of other political parties to secure a halfway majority in the 275-member House of Representatives. A number of political groups, including the Netru Bikram Chand-led Communist Party of Nepal, have also complained that despite getting into peace pacts, some of their cadres and leaders are still languishing in jails. More on news from Nepal. The death toll in a fatal bus accident in Kavre Palanchonk district of central Nepal rose to at least 18 on Wednesday. The incident occurred in Bedhanchonk village on Tuesday evening as the bus packed with passengers was returning from a religious procession. The death toll was likely to rise further as many of at least 15 injured were in critical condition, reports suggest. Lying at a distance of about 90 kilometers far from capital Kathmandu, the Bethan Chonk is full of narrow slopes and steep roads. As per statement by authorities, the passengers were returning from a religious procession when the vehicle met with the accident. The police said it had not ascertained the reason behind the accident. In news from Sri Lanka, Indian Navy Chief Admiral R. Harikumar, who is on a four-day official visit to Sri Lanka, met top political and military officials in the island nation on Wednesday to boost bilateral ties. During talks with Premitha Bandara Tenakun, Sri Lanka's Minister of State for Defence, both the leaders discussed issues of mutual interest to boost cooperation. In his meeting with Lieutenant General Vikram Lianage, commander of the Sri Lanka Army, both sides discussed common security challenges. Admiral Kumar also reviewed the naval facilities at the Colombo port. On Tuesday, the Indian Navy chief held talks with Sri Lankan counterpart and also met the country's Defence Secretary, General Kamal Gunaratne. The Indian Navy regularly interacts with the Sri Lankan Navy through the medium of annual staff talks and pursues various operational engagements at a regular frequency. Hundreds of students in India's Gurugram city throng the Aravali mountain range, donning animal masks and hug trees to protest deforestation of the hilly area on Tuesday. In recent years, the mountain range has suffered decay and deforestation owing to urbanization, which has also impacted the environment. Students in India's northern Gurugram city throng the Aravli mountain range that stretches through northern and western parts of the country to protest deforestation of the hilly area as they observed Aravli Day on Tuesday. The children donning animal masks displayed colourful posters and also hugged trees as part of the demonstration in a bid to save Aravli. The students also stood on the mountain steps in queues as they raised slogans to bring attention to the threats due to rising pollution and shrinking wildlife habitat. A student said, there are many animals and migratory birds who live here and humans do not have any right to cut trees and snatch their homes away. A home for more than 200 species of trees, there are many migratory birds and animals who live here. So, they also have our lives in our hands. We have no right to cut them like this, we have to cut them like this, we have to cut them like this, we have to cut them like this. It will lead to animal and human fight. If there is a Aravli, then our lives will be saved from the same time. These children have also given us and our government and our society. We have also given us both of them. कि राज और समाज दोनों मिलकर इस अरावली को बचाए यदि अरावली नहीं बचेगी या अरावली दिल्ली के फेफड़े हैं दिल्ली को जो ऑक्सीजन मिलती है वो इसी पर्वत से मिलती है दी अरावली रेंज लार्जली इन्फ्लुएंसेस द इकोसिस्टम इन पोल्यूशन लेवल्स ऑफ द सराउंडिंग नेशनल कैपिटल रीजन हावेवर इन रिसेंट ईयर्स द माउंटेन रेंज सफर डी के एंड डिफॉरेस्टेशन ओइंग टू अर्बनाइजेशन विच हैज इम्पैक्टेड द बर्ड्स एंड एनिमल्स हु हैव द होम्स इन इट्स फॉरेस्ट अपार्ट फ्रॉम ह्यूमन लाइव well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.